be talking with Joe Simpson Jr. and Alex Stein, who are part of the WordPress accessibility team. If you're not yet aware, the accessibility team in WordPress is one of the 20 teams that we have, and the team specifically works on accessibility concerns or testing throughout the WordPress project. So Joe and Alex, hello, nice to have you with us. Hey, Courtney. Hello. Hey there. So um, how about we ask each of you what it is outside of our time together in today's space and also over on the WordPress teams. What do you do? Alex, tell us outside of this setting, where else can people find you? What else do you do? So you can always find me around LinkedIn, <laughs> dropping useful links. At least I like to think they're useful. You might uh -huh. think otherwise. Yeah. And when I have the time, I give back as much as I can to Gutenberg, trying to make it more accessible and uh, teach myself a little React in the process. So mm -hmm. it's never a bad thing. And tell me a little, Alex, about what's your day job? Uh, I am a DevOps engineer for Kinsta. Mm -hmm. And I get to use all kinds of cool tech and build new things. That's awesome. So DevOps, if people aren't familiar, takes care of a lot of the server infrastructure that keeps the sites all running. So a good understanding of WordPress is definitely needed in that. And uh, DevOps makes sure that all the developers' lives are also happy too. So we like the DevOps folks. Thank you. And Joe, I know Joe from uh, probably WordCamp Santa Clarita, running one of the WordPress meetup events. Joe, what do you do by day when you're not busy with the accessibility team? Well, I work with a public transit agency here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. uh, Metro. Uh, our mission, of course, as you know, uh, Los Angeles has terrible traffic. And part of our mission is to get folks out of their cars and onto public transit. And I'm part of the digital strategy team there in communications. Mm -hmm. I'm a front end designer and I manage our WordPress block network. Fantastic. So it sounds like you're in WordPress all day, every day, just the same, which is pretty fun. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I have two sort of paths that I've traveled in WordPress. Initially, um, I inherited a, a Headways theme mm -hmm. WordPress site way back in 2014 when our lead developer and CSS goddess both left. Yeah. And um the last five years, I decided to take a more active approach. And that's when I got involved as an organizer, as a meetup leader. And this part of the journey now is to help out behind the scenes and, and really contribute. And that's where our paths crossed um, because I, I, you're an incredible instructor and an incredible leader in the community. So I appreciate yeah. just tagging along with, and Alex and, and the folks on the accessibility team have welcomed me in. So this part of the journey is to really try to make an impact on the, on the back end of WordPress, so to speak, so to speak. Yeah, that's for sure. So maybe this might be a question for Alex. Alex, can you tell us a little bit more about the accessibility team and what it is that the accessibility team does? Where can people even find the accessibility team in WordPress? So you can always find the accessibility team in the accessibility channel and the making WordPress Slack. <laughs> Cool. So how would somebody that has never entered the WordPress Slack, what, what's, uh, a, where would we send them first? Oh, gosh, it's been so long. I'm not <laughs> sure I can answer that question. I was thinking more of the team site. Yeah, I would go to, and not to, to jump in, Alex, but I would, I would jump in and I would go to the make uh, wordpress.org slash accessibility. Um, mm -hmm. Page. And there you'll find information about the bug scrubs and the weekly meetings, as well as information on how to join the Slack team. Yeah, so that's make.wordpress.org slash accessibility. Or if you just land at wordpress.org and you check that get involved tab in the menu, um, that will take you to a preview of the 20 different teams across WordPress. And in fact, I might pull one of those up now just to share my screen with folks so that you can see how you might go about getting there. If you are new and have never contributed to WordPress before, fear not, this is the thing for you. Um, you head out to wordpress.org and you click on this get involved tab in the menu, if you can do that. Um, they'll show the 20 different teams that are there. Accessibility is near the, the top of the pile. 
it will take you out to the accessibility team site. And hey, look, there's Joe. Joe has uh, the, the meeting notes published for May 20th. So you can start getting the information on what's there and what's happening um, and keep up with some, some of what the team does. Joe, you mentioned bug scrubs and a few other things. Can you tell me a little bit more? What's a bug scrub? Um, who is a bug scrub for? Who helps with this? What goes on during those? Well, I'm going to throw that one over to Alex because sure. as as um, many may not know, I'm I'm the new newbie on the team. So my job is to really I'm I'm taking the notes and I'm I'm learning about processes right now. Yeah. But Alex Alex is sort of um, uh, someone that's in on the ground floor in terms of the bug scrub and and things like that. So the bug scrub is it's a rather casual event actually. We all get together and. We look through the accessibility tickets and see if, well, one, if it is accessibility related. If not, we remove the accessibility focus. And, uh, you know, it's all about figuring out how we can move tickets forward. It's a big triage session. Yeah. We have people join that have no experience and we have people join that have all the experience. Right. And I love both ends of that spectrum. I think there is so much value in beginning to learn that process. Um, I'm going to pause here and do a quick ask on my screen, Alex, right now, I have pulled up the link from the sidebar of the accessibility team site that takes me to the core track tickets that have the accessibility label. Hold that thought though, because before we dig in further, I would like to ask both of these gentlemen, um, what's your interesting, why did you first want to join the accessibility team? And tell us a little bit about what brought you there. Alex, how about you first? I joined the accessibility team because I lost what side I had and I quickly learned I didn't have much of an option. Hmm, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, so your approach is very much from a personal experience about why you need accessibility to improve. Yeah, I was, I was always, you know, I've always had a visual impairment, but most people probably would have never known it without me telling them. And, mm -hmm. and I was always of the attitude, oh, this will never happen to me. I'll never end up like all these other students I was in school with at the local blind school. And then, yeah, oh yeah, it happened. And it happened quickly. So never take stuff like that for granted. Yeah, yeah. Very understandable. Well, in, in uh, what I have observed of watching Alex across the WordPress project, uh, speaking from personal experience is definitely a way to help get some of the accessibility initiatives at least visible and uh, on track a little bit more. It's great to have Alex around inside of the WordPress project, helping push some of these issues through. Joe, what brings you to the accessibility team? Why did you pick accessibility? Why did you offer to start contributing? Um, all of that. Well, for me, um, it's sort of been on my back burner for a while. I attended an accessibility conference when I started with the web team at Metro a while back. And I've always um, studied usability and accessibility and tried to push that in terms of how we design sites um, at Metro. But when I got back involved with WordPress, I was really trying to do more in terms of giving back. Mm -hmm. And everything that I've done in terms of our meetups, you know, we, we have some incredible members in our community here, and we've, we all sort of have the same interest in accessibility. So we hosted like a mega meetup last year, and all of these things led to a WordCamp where I think for the first time we had a dedicated track both days on accessibility. So we've yeah. always been trying to push it. And so now I'm trying to take the next step to be more involved and to really help out um, and push the message forward. So whereas Alex is more on the developer side, I'm coming at it from a more community perspective, but I just want to help. So I'm just, yeah. you know, whatever they throw at me, I just want to help in any way I can. Yeah. So an important point that you bring up there, um, if folks don't know, also hanging out in the room right now, I am one of the reps for the training team. And um, we also have behind the scenes, one of our good Eddie staff, Marcus, who is one of the reps for the photos team. And one of the things that's really important that Joe brings up in all of this is that across the different teams, there are 20 of them now, across the different teams that I'm showing quickly on my screen, 
Um, some folks will know lots and lots of code and other folks don't have to. There's a lot that they can get involved with that you don't need to know code to do the work of contributing. And so uh, the teams can help identify some tasks and that even applies over in core. Sometimes they need people to just facilitate the meetings. Um, it takes a little bit of knowing what's going on to be able to do that, but it doesn't always involve code in the ways that you contribute. So lots of good options that are there. Um, cool. So Alex, on my screen, let's bring it back over a little bit to Bug Scrub. I have the labels from Core Track that are here, tagged accessibility. And you mentioned that one of the things people do during this, during a Bug Scrub is to go over these tickets and to see if that issue is still an accessibility concern or not. Um, I'm going to do a quick, just let's, I'm looking at one. I actually have my own accessibility. My eyes need me to zoom in on my screen a little bit more. Um, so I see one that is, let's see, let me grab a quick example here to put up on my screen. Um, 2022, add accessibility ready tag in the theme repository as an issue. So if I were somebody that doesn't know code, and I'll drop this in for everybody in the room to see the link to this, if they would like to get to that one issue. Um, it does have a focus in there already declared as accessibility. And so during a bug scrub, Alex, you would have folks on the team look through this and help decide if this needs accessibility still. Yes, and how to move the ticket forward. If it's a ticket with a patch, does it need testing? Uh, has it had enough testing and is it ready for next steps? Does it need a patch to test? Mm. Does it need design feedback? Any of these things? Yeah, yeah. So as I'm looking through this, I see folks like Joe Dolson and JB. JB is the core team rep. Um, Joe has been a long time contributor and um, worked a lot on the accessibility team over the years. And I also see our own Mike Schroeder with some comments in there. So folks will jump in and help create some information, some more comments around there. Um, and others that have accessibility concerns will come through and say, hey, this issue needs this or that done. And so that's the way to go about it. Um, Alex, without opening too much of a can of worms, how would I do the same thing? Would, would the same information be needed outside of core track? Let's ask that. Do you look somewhere else for bug scrubs besides just core track? Like GitHub? Um, yes. Yeah, so in some situations, that's where the keyword reported upstream comes into play. Okay. So we start out in core track, decides that let's say it applies more to Gutenberg, uh, mm -hmm. GitHub issue is opened and the ticket is closed for reported upstream. Okay, cool. So if I were to look for like, is accessibility one of the filters that I can use? So I can share it on my screen. Let me see if I can pull this one. I'll do a search. Now, now that's yep. something I'm not going to comment on how hard <laughs> it is to search tickets. Yeah, there's that. So there is a label in um, the WordPress GitHub repository. This is a link to the WordPress GitHub repository. And um, inside that area, um, the needs accessibility feedback is a label that's there. And so again, that's an area where folks that would like to contribute to accessibility information and testing and things can look through. And I see 32 things right now that are listed as open. So you may or may not need to know a whole lot of code or be the most skilled accessibility consultant, but these are issues that you can go directly to and read what's the concern that's happening there and start to get involved from that side of it too. Very cool. Um, so uh, what other kinds of things is the accessibility team doing these days? What other needs does the team have? The team is mostly like pretty heavily involved in the core side. Mm -hmm. Every now and then we get involved in some Gutenberg stuff, but I generally take on a lot of those fixes. I'm not sure that we have anyone else on the team that's actively making code fixes at this point okay. for Gutenberg. So that's actually a really, really big need. 
Mm -hmm. Berg development moves faster than anything I've ever seen before. Yeah. And we just don't have enough people to even triage that, let alone fix it. Mm. Yeah. And Alex, hasn't there, um, and I think there's also been a need for, for people with React experience, correct? That's yes. been part of the discussion too. No. Yeah. Yes, I, I started with no React experience and it's basically taught me everything I know today. I often think of DevOps folks as the ones that are closer to backend development. So tossing React at you is fantastic, Alex. <laughs> You amaze me some days. It's great. Well, I, I got I got told that um, you know if we the accessibility team can either be the problem or the solutions. I said, okay, I'll try to be the solution, and so I went learn React. Yeah, uh, well, and and you do great work for it. Um, just want you to make sure that you know that that your presence across the project has been noticed and highly encouraged as well. Um, so we definitely fully support that. If somebody is interested in joining, they say, I have either only a little bit of experience or I have lots of code experience, whichever, they come to the site, they know a little bit about what's happening. And on the sidebar of the site, uh, we also see, and what I'm showing on my screen on the sidebar, there are links to the team handbook. The handbook is a place to go and find out all the policies and procedures of that team and how they work. The requirements for themes to be accessibility ready, the theme developer handbook, which would be important for people making themes for WordPress to know how to get their themes accessibility ready. The link to the codex still about accessibility codex is um, before we had wordpress.org slash support slash articles or developer.wordpress.org, we had a Wikipedia style area, and there's still some good info that's over there. We have some talks about accessibility on WordPress TV and a Twitter account that's running too. The talks on WordPress TV, I'll just do a quick call out. Um, those are areas that there are ways to send in closed captions and those closed captions help with internationalization and also accessibility. So if you're like, hey, I might not know a whole lot of code, but is there anything anywhere I could do to get started? One of the best solutions that the first training team rep ever told me about, um, Tracy Levesque over at Yanks Inc. said, why not learn while you are contributing to accessibility and internationalization by writing the captions for the videos on WordPress TV? So you can watch the accessibility videos and caption them into your language or other languages. Um, that's kind of a nice option. So there's some resources there on the sidebar of the site. Definitely worth a look. Do you have folks that are checking in? I see accessibility in the forums. Um, do you have folks that look at the wordpress.org slash support forums area related to accessibility? Is that something that folks could get started doing? Sure. Oh, I'm sorry, Alex, go ahead. I was just going to say, I used to look into that until most of the accessibility posts in there started to be related to my site isn't loading. Oh. That type of accessibility. Yeah, yeah. I'm showing what I see in the forums right now. Um, one of the questions that's in there too, I see some things about WebAIM and I recognize WAVE and WebAIM things and I'm not sure. Let's take a look at this person's issue. So um, I don't know where they came from. Yeah, I see what's going on here. So, <laughs> right, so they're saying the page I need help with. So this is just a general kind of a question coming in. And it looks like one of the forum moderators did jump in to help respond with that, to help get the person connected in the right location. But there's an area of the forums that is specifically focused on accessibility concerns. So for those that would like to find a small step, that might be a good one. And I was just going to jump in and, and also encourage folks to attend the bug scrub and attend the weekly meetings. That's probably the, mm -hmm. the best way to get involved. And, yeah. and then you'll find that there's a number, just like you mentioned, that there are over 20 teams for people to get, you know, to begin participating mm -hmm. and contributing. Our team is broken down into the, the various areas as well. So they report during the meeting. So depending on which area you may want to delve into in terms of accessibility and WordPress, you'll find there what you want to jump into. Mm -hmm. And then of course, I think I shared earlier, 
Um, I always share lots of links. So there's a lot of great information, like you mentioned, that WordPress TV, just on how to get involved. Our, uh, our other colleague, uh, Stefano, uh, who's a team rep, he did a great presentation at WordCamp Santa Clarita on how to contribute to WordPress accessibility. So there's great uh, resources out there for, for people to sort of tap into and figure out how you want to contribute. I know for me, as um, I'm f- from a different perspective, as a front end designer, I wanted to just help. So getting in, I bet they're always welcoming in terms of answering questions. And um, and a- another great way to get involved also, and I'm sort of running on, but just taking the notes has allowed me to learn the process and see what's going on. And just mm-hmm. lurking in the background during the bug scrub is incredible. Just seeing how tickets are, um, how problems are brought up forward, how tickets are answered and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Marcus just let me know that I had paused my screen share and now I brought it back. So I'm doing the quick catch up of the things that I was mentioning. So there's the accessibility forums inside of just basic support forums. Uh, Here is the Gutenberg issues that you see on the screen and anything that has the issues that are flagged in here that says it needs accessibility. And you can click in and read what the issue is saying. Um, to be able to go from there. And then the other one that I shared was the link to the core track tickets from the bug scrub is right here. Here is a track ticket and what those look like. And so within those, I can say, let's see what this one's all about in this track ticket. And I could see add accessibility ready tag to the theme repo for this theme and see all the comments that folks have left and what work has been done to get that issue moving forward. So. Great input there. And at the top of the Teams page, if you are on the accessibility Teams page, you'll find all of these helpful links across the top. Um, And usually there's a link somewhere floating around to join. Yeah, if we see over on this area, you'll be able to find links that get you over into Slack from here or the team meetings. It says WordPress is using Slack. This is how to join Slack. And they hold the meetings all over text-based chat. Uh, for team meetings. That's how the 20 different teams generally run their meetings. Um, Not to say we don't use some other sources, but that's usually how it works. And that helps actually with a lot of accessibility needs is what I understand. So that's really good. Do check the sidebar that was listed there as well. Um, So skill levels of people that show up, we've talked a little bit about this. Somebody that's new, Joe, you made the point, take the meeting notes That's an easy ask is take the meeting notes. It's an easy ask for a good bit of the population. Um, Alex, you've shared that that writing the agenda and then recap notes can be a struggle actually for you. Is that right? Oh, yes. (laughs) So for those that might not quite understand why, why, why is it hard for you to write the meeting agenda for the team? Because on the... Make accessibility side and all the make sites, to my knowledge, uh, Gutenberg is being used. Yeah. And, and while there has been a ton of progress, it's still not near enough. Yeah. I, right. it, you know, I will only consider it enough when it doesn't take me two times as long as someone with sight to write a post. Yeah. And so Something folks may or may not know is that to just simply compose a post is a challenge for parts of our WordPress community. And if you're able to log in and do that step, that makes it a lot easier to move on to running the meeting. Spaces like Slack, um, using GitHub for issues and core track tickets have seemed like I've noticed Alex using a lot of those, just my own observation. I've noticed Alex using a lot of those and preferring to work in places that most people that aren't devs would be like, ah, run away. Um, (laughs) So let's all help each other as we get through this. I think that would be a good way to do it. Uh, What about somebody that is a little bit familiar with browser testing? If they are, they're beginning to understand, they may know things like, if you go into your dev tools and you turn on things like screen reading from your computer, or you start checking into some other things um, using your dev tools in your browser, what kind of stuff can they start testing? What can somebody with those skill levels do? Any ideas? I was hoping Joe was going to take that one. <laughs> yeah. 
I was going to say, I, I think the need for just general testing and, you know, just as a foundation is needed. Yeah. So if you have a screen reader or if you can run your accessibility tools, when you pull up mm -hmm. um, WordPress and give feedback on that, that's probably the most helpful way to identify problems, especially with the new release, as, as, as we've just seen, people should load it up and, and, and run their screen readers or um, do some basic, you know, tab testing and things like that. And that kind of feedback really helps because um, just getting people to use the product. And as, as uh, Alex mentioned, um, Gutenberg or full site editing isn't really up to where he needs it to be. Yeah. Just getting that kind of feedback and getting that in quantity and, and getting that from different people is going to be very helpful for the team in general. Yeah. So um, in that same location, I'm going to call up the test team site and a lot of times you'll see Anne, although others can do this too, um, will publish something that's a step-by-step -step set of directions. Let me see if I could jump down to one of the more recent ones. Calls for testing. Um, FSE call for testing. This one has closed. I actually ran through doing this one and the video is on WordPress TV. But in this, there is a set of directions of steps to follow. And usually there are questions in here like, can you run through and test it on this version of the software? And then there are some questions at the end. And one of those questions is usually like, um, did anything crash? What was your experience? Blah, blah, blah. At the very end, it's, did it work using a keyboard only? Did it work using a screen reader? So this is a set of directions. Go try and make this thing happen in WordPress. And if you can do that and practice using your, your keyboard only, not a mouse or a uh, touchpad. So this is literally on the screen that I'm browsing through right now. I am hitting the tab key and you can see that it's going through all of the links on the page uh, to navigate me around. So what this is asking is, can you do something just using your keyboard? Um, and that would be both logged in and not. So front of site, not logged in. Can you move around on the screen and then logged in and inside of the WordPress interface um, when you're logged in? What does that experience look like for you as you're hitting tab or using a screen reader or anything like that? And to provide that type of feedback too. And that's a great point because most people think when they think in terms of accessibility, it's just the front end, how the page loads, et cetera. But for users on the back end that may have um, some challenges, how do they use the admin and how if how can we improve that? So it's not just the front end, it's both in. And I think a lot of folks don't realize that. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 why we need folks to help even with writing the beating agenda and recap notes for Alex. Um, the logged in experience for writing a post doesn't work for Alex. So we've got to get things up to speed. Um, and then if somebody is an accessibility specialist or a developer and says, I've got some time to contribute, either a small chunk of time, one off, or in an ongoing way, what would you want them to do? <laughs> Reach out right now. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Come to the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. So there's a lot that uh, can be done at that point, too. Yeah, and I know um, at WordCamp Europe, just go to... Go visit, sit at the table uh, during contributor day, and I'm yeah. sure they'll find something uh, where your, your skills will be helpful. Yeah. So uh, to the point of WordCamp Europe, that's happening June 2nd through 4th, and Stefano will be there. Stefano is also one of the team reps or has been one of the team reps for accessibility team, um, can help get folks started. And it does not take having accessibility challenges for you to be able to help nor do you have to be the most skilled developer necessarily. So please come talk to us. Um, what's on your wish list across all of Make WordPress itself? So less about just the single bit of software that powers all of the sites, but more about make.wordpress.org. Um, across the teams that make up all 20 of our, our separate areas within the WordPress project, make sites, Slack, GitHub, et cetera, What's your wish list as accessibility team? What would you like to see happen across the whole project? Oh, that's it's a tough one. one. Yeah. I know I, 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 was good. I was hoping Alex would jump in on that one. I know <laughs> for me, uh, coming from my perspective, um, I just want more people 
to know that they can contribute and know that they can make a difference. So it would be great if, for example, our team doubled in size. Um, if a lot of the people that are doing a lot of the hardcore development, if there were partnerships with, you know, outside companies that could sponsor some of the work that they do because they devote a lot of their own time to making these changes. So, um, and of course, you know, they're taking time out of their professional day uh, to do that. So um, making it easier for them to contribute some great things would be my dream. Um, I would love uh, to see that happen. Yeah. Alex, um, you and I cross paths because you come over to the training team's coffee hours every week, which is amazing. <laughs> and it's a little early for Joe's time zone. And I get that. Uh, <laughs> Joe might be if I get up at 5 a.m., I could possibly <laughs> drop in. That's coffee hour. Um, so to that end, Alex, uh, the work you've done on making some pull requests for those that don't know the lingo, Alex reviews code and wanders around through learn.wordpress.org, which is where the training team's content goes to live and uh, has noticed some things accessibility wise that don't quite pass. Alex being a skilled developer is able to go to the code and make some changes and submit, submit those changes. So Alex, what other parts of wordpress.org, the website um, would be on your like wish list of things that you would like to see? Uh, well, that's a really hard question to answer because every now and then I find stuff so inaccessible that I actually didn't know it did that. So or I, I forget when we had this discussion, but when you told me that there were submenus in places, I had no idea there were submenus. You yeah. can't fix something you don't know is already broken. To Alex's point on my screen right now, I'm on make.wordpress.org, the site. And inside of the Get Involved tab, there's a drop down to Five for the Future. And I think that was the comment, Alex, um, that you were that based on looking at front of site, you didn't know that that was a drop down area. Yeah. And if you don't know something's inaccessible, you definitely cannot fix it. Right. Yeah. So across the teams, um, I could be, this is just, just some ideas here. Um, there's a lot of areas where accessibility is needed, both in the software itself, but also in the understanding across the teams. We saw with uh, WordPress.tv, if you if folks haven't been there yet, there is a TV team that has meetings like accessibility does, but there's the site WordPress.tv and it's been around a long time and it has recordings of pretty much every WordCamp for the past, I don't know how many years, um, all the major events and there's content coming into it from learn.wordpress.org and some other places. But watching through these videos, we uh, put an emphasis on trying to get closed captions going and that makes it easier then to also put into additional languages. Um, that's an area where we see obvious cross team collaboration. I think the work Alex has begun at reviewing what's happening on learn.wordpress.org is a really big one. Um, but I think that there's more work and more cross-team collaboration that we can do. Alex, after just hanging around you for a while, it dawned on me to ask the marketing team to ensure that our social media messages have alt text on the work that they're putting forward. So there's bits like this across the whole project and no one person, no single team alone can can solve it all. Um, so highly welcome calling folks in to help participate. So let's think about work camps and meetup groups. And I, and I would, and just, just to, to add onto what you were saying, yeah. I think it's up to each contributor or each person to sort of find that niche where they belong. I'm on the work camp US team on the comms team. And part of what we did at the very beginning was to write some guidelines to make sure that people write a certain way to make sure that the, the content they're writing was accessible. We wanted to make sure that there was always a alt tag on everything. We yeah. wanted to make sure that how we wrote our social media was a certain way with accessibility in mind. So I think the message that you were just discussing, making sure that no matter what part of WordPress that you're involved in or that you touch, yeah. try to impact it in terms of accessibility. And those little changes can sort of add up to something bigger. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I've noticed that more folks, when they see the alt text is being used, um, I just saw this on one of my coworkers, George Mamadashvili, uh, goes by Mamaduka on Twitter. And I complimented George on using the alt text because 
you don't have to in Twitter. And sometimes Twitter will be smart to pick it up, but he was sharing a code snippet and it's not going to know what to do with that. Um, so he used the alt text field and I, th- I just called it out like, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, so there's, there's things like that to certainly be doing. How about accessibility needs for, we're getting close to being in person, I think. Um, we've tried to keep ourselves together through the pandemic. I attended Santa Clarita for a virtual version of a word camp. Um, what do we do for both virtual and in-person WordPress is gathering and how do we think about accessibility for some of those situations? Both have extremely large challenges. Yeah. In person, I really don't know how to work that. The in-person word camps I went to, I was lucky enough to have my father attend with me because otherwise I would have absolutely no idea what to do with that type of crowd. Mm. And to my knowledge, I don't think it's something that a lot of people on the word camp committees have thought about. And yeah. then as far as the uh, online meetups, well, those come with all kinds of challenges in itself, like your screen sharing right now. Most groups don't narrate what they're screen sharing. Most people would never even think that to be an issue. Mm. So just even getting basic awareness around some of these groups is just a big PR thing in itself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I totally get that. So actually on my screen, I pulled up for WordCamp Europe. I put up the homepage for that right now on screen sharing. Um, so I think maybe we could get some training together, <laughs> conspiring for no good, um, to help meet up organizers with some accessibility considerations. Like if they're using a virtual platform, let's see if we could get the closed captions enabled and remind folks to narrate what's happening on the screen or to introduce who else is on camera or in the room so that you're vaguely aware, like someone's coming and going, that type of thing. Um, Yeah, those are some really good ideas. What about like physical presence type of things? If we're in person together, um, we know some, those that are with us right now, a lot of us are based in North America, particularly in the US. So we know that there are some certain considerations that we have with ADA, like curbs and some things like that. Um, are there, is, is there more work to do around accessibility in person at events? What would be helpful in those kind of scenarios for varying accessibility needs? So one thing people need to understand is accessibility goes so much further than, oh yeah, there's a wheelchair uh, wheelchair ramp out there. Sure. That definitely means my whole event just became accessible. That is <laughs> not at all what that means. That's a really good first step, but it's not at all what that means. Yeah. Another thing I would like to throw out there is when you walk up to a blind person, please don't sc- scream at them like they can't hear you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Everybody thinks that's some big stereotype, but it happens Mm -hmm. more than it doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, I would say. Mm, That's rough. For for the deaf, you know, we need to make sure that we have some way to communicate with them. Right. I I don't know sign language. I don't really know how to bridge that gap, but this is all stuff we should start researching and planning. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. So um, one of the, the things that we have seen at a lot of the international level camps is real time closed captioning on the screen. And that has improved over the years, which is fantastic. Um, it, I also know that at some of our largest camps, we have venues that are far more accessible than others. Um, I'm thinking about uh, where Camp US in 2015 was in Philadelphia. And um, at the time I was a mom with a newborn at home and needed to make use of the mama pods, which were there for those of us feeding babies to take care of. Um, So I checked ahead and I was pretty bold in asking like, hey, I need this, is that, and that's a temporary consideration, right? Um, But it's still something that very much was pertinent to whether or not I would be attending the event. 
I think to events that are in really large facilities that have a lot of compliance policies in place, that's certainly helpful. But I often also think about, you know, we, we also made spaces for like quiet designated areas and that, but let's take for instance, Alex, um, for those that have vision impairments, some folks may come with um, a seeing eye dog, some people may have a cane with them, but would it be helpful to, and, and do we have systems in place if you need something like a person to help get you places? Do we have a good way in place to say, hey, can I have someone help me get to where I need to go? Well, that's where I was kind of going next, right? Is yeah. uh, I can't really speak to this because I've taken, you know, it's been quite a lo long time, probably, when was it, maybe 2017 since I've been to Fort Camp US? Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that that is an option. It should be an option. Mm. And that's not to say that someone nearby might not, uh, might say, oh, well, I could certainly help you around, but is it, is it a given? Do you yeah. know, as someone who just bought this ticket that I will be able to be included? And that is not something I could give a definite yes to. Yeah. So I actually am looking at the WordCamp Europe page right now. And I just started going through the checkout process of getting a ticket. And I know that we do always ask about food considerations. Um, and we have usually a couple fields in there that are also related to like, do you have any life-threatening illnesses that we should be aware of? Do you have some other things? So there's that. Do you have any accessibility needs such as a sign language interpreter, wheelchair access, um, and then the follow-up is, yes, we will contact you. I'm thinking of, of things, some of these require professional assistance, um, right? So getting a sign language interpreter, that's a little hard to, to get a lot of volunteers from the WordPress community. Um, a lower barrier to entry, depending on people's comfortability, might be I'm cheating a little here, folks. Um, I have a close friend who is a visually impaired instructor. Like she teaches those that are visually impaired, young children, especially. She has guided me on how to be a guide, <laughs> right? We go with, here's my elbow. If you would like to, you know, you extend the offer and, and here's my elbow and I will help walk to the destination. That might be a lower barrier to entry if we can have some folks trained in that regard. I don't know if there are other accessibility needs like that across the project that maybe we just haven't really thought through yet and to start making some of those because that's something that with like a, a video ahead of time and appropriate train like here's a video on how to do the thing and a quick check in location we might be able to get some community to volunteers for something like that um the big rule is you never stand behind a person with accessibility needs and try to push nope nope nope, nope. i've seen that happen um sadly more than i would like they try and guide people from behind with shoulders that's so wrong um, so there's just a lot that maybe we can explore and get into. So if there are ways to support the accessibility team with some of those things, then let's, let's have at it. Um, we do have a couple events coming up. You see on my screen that I started through that WordCamp EU checkout process. Uh, Stefano, I do not know how to pronounce Stefano's last name. If either of you do. No. Minoa. No. Minoa. Minoa. I believe so. Yeah, we're off with our syllables, but it's okay. So Stefano wow. will be on location there and that's great. So let's make sure we, we connect. Um, during WordCamp EU, there will be a contributor day and I'm showing the website for it on my screen right now. So contributor day is going to be on the 2nd of June, a Thursday. It's a one day, everybody gets together. We start often in a big room. And um, if folks are with us and hearing this at this time, and you need some consideration, like I want to get connected and you need help doing that, please reach out. Um, the simple idea of if someone needs a guide to get to a place, then let's let, please do reach out and connect and we'll see what we can do to make that happen even then. Um, also, we have a lot about accessibility. Um, I'm going to pull up the Santa Clarita Valley Word where is it a meetup it's a meetup group there's the talk from stefano specifically about contributing to the accessibility oh and look there's joe 
Yeah, it was part of the pause. it was part of the word camp. So I just yeah. highlighted some of the um the the talks yeah. that spoke specifically to contributing. Yeah, yeah. So that's fantastic that we had an entire process through that. It wants to keep playing, and now I hear two Joes, and I am enjoying that. <laughs> Um, so we have contributor day. Other than that, at WordCamp Europe, we also have the accessibility table is going on during WordCamp Europe. I'll pull that back up on the screen. So that's, um, there are different tables set up during the event itself. So June 3rd and 4th, Joe, are you saying they'll be out probably around the hallway track area? Is that where that's well, happening? I, I believe that the accessibility table is going to be part of contributor day. You know okay. how they break. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, think, okay. I think that's where Stefano is going to be. Cool. I, I know that there is going to be at least one table that's out in the hallway. That's kind of happening throughout the event to help people get connected to various teams too. And, and uh, what I can do is I'll, I'll check with um, the folks. I know two people on our current U S team are going to be, they're part of the organizing team for Europe. So I can find out for sure. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, WordCamp US is coming up September 9 through 11. Let's see if I can pull that site up. WordCamp US. And I am super excited for this one as well. That is happening in San Diego. Joe, you were on the organizing committee of sorts for this. Yes. Looking yeah. And, and we're currently, as a matter of fact, today we began talking about Contributor Day, how that's going to be organized mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And also to go back to uh, one of Alex's points, he reached out specifically with some of those same concerns that we talked about. And I, I broached the topic with our attendee experience team. So hopefully we'll yeah. be able to follow up. And what I'd love to happen is to have Alex speak with that team and, and express some of the concerns that he expressed here today. Yeah, I think that's, that's definitely fantastic. Um, we also have more info available for you. WordPress Accessibility Day. Accessibility Day. I know I've seen the site. Um, I'm really excited about this initiative. So it is happening November 2nd through 3rd, two days. And um, Joe, are you involved in this one? And can, can either of you tell me more? Well, I, I was involved with the first one. Uh, they skipped a year last year. I yeah. was a volunteer wrangler for that one. It's 24 consecutive hours of accessibility. So that's where the two to three uh, yeah. comes in. It starts in one time zone and it goes continually for 24 hours of accessibility uh, talks. So that mm -hmm. one's incredible too, because no matter where you are in the world, you don't have to get up at two in the morning unless you want to yeah. and participate. I know they're looking for people to help. Uh, I think they're in the early stages, so I'm sure they're going to do their call soon, but yeah, it's, it's a, it was so much fun. And that's where I initially met Joe and Stefano uh, personally. And I believe, Alex, did you speak at the first one? I did not. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's a great event uh, for people that want to learn uh, more about accessibility and WordPress. Sounds great. I will make a point to be there because I know enough to do a preliminary check with some tools on my websites, but there's always more to learn and always new things happening to brush up on. Um, we do have a couple of other things to draw some attention to. Amber Hines runs a meetup group. Amber is known in the WordPress space and uh, does fantastic work. So there is a meetup group and Joe Dolson will be speaking at that on June 20th. Can provide the links over here as well for everyone that is present with us. Um, Joe will be presenting at that meetup group, but that meetup group in general is focused on accessibility. So it's a fantastic one to just kind of always keep around with you. Um, there is a good talk. I'm running through some links here that Joe shared with me as well. There's a great talk that Amber has done about uh, running user tests in the real world with real users. And so that one would be also good to check out. And finally, I need to catch the replay. I signed up and was unable to attend this. I am one of Alex's biggest fans, I think. I need an autograph, uh, not joking. So um, Alex helped consult on what GiveWP, the plugin, would need to do to be more accessible. So I look forward to digging back. That one's been on my like, oh, I need to go and um, make sure that I'm watching that one. So Literally, you could see on my screen right now that I am saying toss it to my watch later queue because that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> oh my gosh. What was so amazing about that one <laughs> is just from an audience standpoint, just seeing Alex work 
and I don't think I've ever seen mm. someone other than in a, uh, a how-to video, someone actually live test the site yeah. and just how yeah. fast things were read back and just his whole process, just seeing someone's thought process was fascinating. So I had to definitely start that one. That was probably one of the highlights of this yeah. year in terms of accessibility for me. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, and I'm I'm kind of scrubbing through the video here a little bit, Alex. What was, what were you about to share with us? I was just gonna say, it, you know, it, it's a cool quality to have, but it's it's not everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you do so much good work for the WordPress community, Alex, and uh, leading, helping lead the team on accessibility and being vocal about the support you need. Um, is something that stands out throughout the WordPress project. So just know that your presence is most appreciated. And I really actually want to go through and, and hear the feedback that you have um, around testing through a plugin and what the plugin can do. And I remember that GiveWP walked away from that and wanted to take action soon after that. So that's fantastic. Um, yeah, and Mark described in that, that video in particular. So cool. Thank you all so very much for being with us. Um, like I said, a lot of us are heading off to go to WordCamp Europe next week. So if I take a look at the events.godaddy.com area, you will see that in our upcoming events, we're a little bit light, but we do have a coffee chat coming up in July. Um, I will see if my teammate Marcus can float me a link. <laughs> Marcus says he added that cue um, into his watch later area as well. So if I switch over to, oh, I want to see if I can find one of the GoDaddy Pro events. Marcus might help me out here on if we already have that coffee chat one up. We will be having a coffee chat during the month of June. And then into July, there'll be some more things coming for you here at events.godaddy.com. Next week, we will be hopefully airing a replay of this on our Twitter account. A lot of us will be at WordCamp EU as well. So while we are in Europe, feel free to tune in online. Hopefully all of the accessibility needs for online participation help. Um, I will be there and trying to help get the uh, contributor day slightly online if I possibly can, at least over at the training team. So do stop by, say hello, find us while we're there. Swing through again over at make.wordpress.org to find the accessibility team and everybody's presence, frankly, is welcomed. We just, we need help. Um, so thank you all for being with us. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Joe. Hey, you're welcome. Thank oh, and by you. the way, our next meeting is June 17th. So make, make sure you show up then. June 17th. All right, got it. I will, I will put it on my calendar and see if I could be there. Cool, I'm gonna hit stop share and stop record.